Hello and welcome to Hydra Collectibles where we let our geek flag fly. My name's Luke and I'm your host and today we're discussing Animazons. <coughs> so if you've been watching my videos throughout this Halloween month, you have no doubt spotted this little guy in the background. He's a kind of zombified pirate octopus and he's a plush toy which many of you people probably thought just belonged to my children. Well, the truth is, he doesn't belong to my children, he actually belongs to me. However, my kids do love playing with these toys and I've had these toys for quite a while now, quite a number of years. What are they? Well, stay tuned to the video to find out more. Before we get started, I'd like to encourage you to hit that subscribe button. We put out geeky content every week and if you'd like to be ahead of the curve, you can also hit the bell icon. So these toys were initially launched as part of a Kickstarter idea. A selection of plush toys were made after two friends were basically playing the game Dead Island and one of them made a reference to how in every zombie pandemic you never saw any zombified animals and that in particular a zombified giraffe would be hilarious to see. This guy was not wrong and yeah, thanks to this amazing conversation, this little throwaway line, this awesome line of Toph toys was formed. So, what is Animazoms? Well, Animazoms is an adventure series created by Ashley Yeats revolving around chalk and cheese twins Sophie and Max Unbound with their mystical powers which help them bring back to life unique and lovable animal zombies. Putting pen to paper, they designed various ideas for a soft toy range before enlisting the help of a design agency. It was here when they first started working with an illustrator who proved to be in a similar wavelength to them. However, with agency costs draining much of the resources, it became very difficult to continue operating through them. This led the creator to work with a more direct route to the factories, where he took the production drawings after many, many different revisions and created the current batch of Animazoms that we have here today. The creator, Ashley Yeats, began to sell these items at various Comic Cons and events throughout the UK, and this is where I first met them. I immediately fell in love with this line and it didn't take me long before I too was on their website, clicking through the pages, finding the shop and buying the entire collection for myself. As news spread, many of these characters sold out extremely fast and so plans for a Series 2 wave were put into action. However, sadly, these goals just weren't achievable at that time and so plans shifted in 2017 to take a new approach. What was this new direction? What was this new goal? Well, it was a new pitch, a new way to put forward these creations, and that came in the form of a story. So, what is the story? Well, I'll tell you. We follow the adventures of Max and Sophie Unbound, along with their crazy lovable Animazoms. With the disappearance of their grandfather, Professor Unbound, we see the twins thrown into a world of wonder, tied to the curiosities of the laboratory in which their grandfather worked, but with corrupt forces in pursuit of their power, they're challenged with more than just his rescue, as they unravel a mystery of galactic consequences. With an intriguing cast of characters, environments and world lore, the Animazoms not only promise an exciting adventure, but seamlessly integrates the highlights, real environmental threats facing the animal kingdom, along with more complex themes such as singularity and impact of AI in modern society. So with that, let's take a look at this first wave. This first wave was split into three subcategories, which ranged from household pets to wild animals to ocean life. So with that, let's take a look at these individual characters. So first up, let's take a look at Bruno the dog. This dog is adorable. Um, listed as one of the primary characters to the series, I would anticipate that maybe this is the actual pet of one of the twins. You know, maybe they brought this dog to life first and that's how they realised their power. I don't actually know, I don't have any insider information, but I for one can't wait to find out should this story continue. Um, so yeah, this little guy is awesome. If you take a look there, he's got all the like Frankenstein style stitches, we can see all the cuts and bruises, and he's got a little bandaged hand, which does actually come away, <laughs> is uh, attached by Velcro. This is something that a lot of these toys have. They have like a little gimmick to go along with them. If we turn him around there, you can see that his brain is completely, completely open to the elements. One of the best things about these is they are very, very soft. They are amazing and they are built with kids in mind. You know, this is a safe toy to give to your children. My, my little girl has been playing with these 
almost since she was first born. So uh, yeah, it's it's amazing stuff. It's all approved. It's all safe. And yeah, I am so glad that I invested in these when I had the chance. So next up and sticking with that pet theme, we are going with Victor the Bunny Rabbit. <laughs> Again, I love this guy. Uh, you can see here he's been run over, which is of course very sad. But you know, he's got separate limbs. So we got a lucky rabbit's foot that is actually attached to a keychain, which is a really nice gimmick, you know, given the, the style of it actually being a rabbit. Um, we have a missing ear, which has been replaced by a carrot, which again is a keychain. So you can add that to your keys as well. I love these little gimmicks, you know, they are so cool. Um, you know, much the same style, same color eyes, all the stitching in place. He's got some nice jagged teeth. Once again, a great toy and a great piece to have for any zombie fan. And the third and final member of the pet subcategory is, of course, George the Hamster. Uh, why you might think he's called George? Well, he does actually have these nice thick glasses. And for any of you who don't know, there is a zombie film director out there, George A. Romero. Pretty much created zombies as we know them today. And uh, yeah, this little guy is very much based on him. We, we had this confirmed when I met up with the creative team at Comic-Con. So uh, yeah, I love this guy. <laughs> so cool. And a really nice touch to, you know, add that George Romero uh, homage to, to their series. Uh, well done, guys. Great piece. So now let's leave the home and let's venture off into the wildlife of the Sahara. Let's take a look at the creatures that we would find out in the wilderness and what would happen should the zombie virus hit those areas. So first up, how could we visit the plains of Africa without of course showing an elephant? This elephant is called Tom, I believe, although it's spelt with a T-H-O-M. Um, I'm not sure if that is a specific reference to anything zombie related, so I do apologize for not knowing that information. But yeah, this guy is cool. Look, check that out. All that nice skull detail imprinted on there. He has a nice little hat, which of course, if you pop it out, his brain comes out. How cool is that? You know, this uh, it's these nice little gimmicks that I love so much. And of course, he does come with a little squashed dead mouse under his foot, which is attached by Velcro. So you could attach this to any other figure, should you wish. Um, yeah, I love this outfit. It's kind of got that uh, Arabian, like Aladdin style outfit on. And I just think that's very cool. I, I like it. There's, there's something really beautiful about these creations. So sticking with the Sahara, let's talk about rodents. You know, if you're gonna have a zombie apocalypse that wipes out most of mankind, you're probably gonna get a few rodents kicking around. You know, after all, it is more often than not rodents that spread the disease. But what rodents would they use over in Africa? Well, let's have a think. If you've been to many zoos, you've probably seen these creatures. If you have a particular form of insurance here in the UK, you probably know already. The answer is, of course, meerkats. Uh, for any Lion King fans out there, you would think this guy might be called Timon, but no, he is actually called Samuel. Um, I love this one. This one is really nice. This one has a gimmick that a lot of the others do not have. Um, yes, he has like the jaw being on display. Yes, he has all the usual... Uh, stitches and everything else which I love throughout all of these figures that's a nice touch but what this guy has is actually a zip across his tummy so can you imagine what we're gonna find in here if we unzip this tummy we have you guessed it cuddly toy plush guts who doesn't love this stuff you know it's like having a little autopsy teddy it's, it's crazy but fun all at the same time a fantastic idea and you know you can always take this piece out and replace it with that uh, the rat from the elephant or you can replace it with the spider from the uh, George the hamster you know the possibilities are endless you can put whatever you want in there you can use it to store your loose change if you wanted to but it's just such a nice touch to have that zip if we ever do get a, a wave number two or a wave number three etc very much like to see this reincorporated in some other toys and finally, how can we talk about the animals of Africa without, of course, mentioning the animal that sparked this entire thing in the beginning? Yes, they actually did go ahead and make a zombie giraffe. And this zombie giraffe, outside of the octopus back there, may indeed be my favourite. His name is Wilson, 
And uh, yeah, very much the same as all of the others. He has the rib cage on show, the stitching. He has those lovely yellow zombie eyes. He's incredibly soft and lovable, very huggable toy. Um, but yeah, the gimmick for this one is there is a little plaster just here on his neck. And if you lift up that Velcro, his head pops off. Yeah, nice. <laughs> Nice little bit of bone there, you know, holding it in place. But yeah, he has a snapped neck. And uh, <laughs> once again, I love it. It's such a cool concept, such a great idea. I really hope that we see more of these creatures. And with that, let's move on to the third and final subtitle of this initial wave, which of course is the Zombies of the Ocean Deep. Now you've already seen the octopus over here, but we'll get to him later. Let's kick things off with the first creature. And so the first creature from the ocean deep that I would like to show you is Wesley the Lobster. I wasn't a huge fan of Wesley when I first saw him at the conventions. He was sitting there on the table and I kind of thought he was the weakest out of the bunch. However, as time has gone on, I have really grown to love this toy. I love the way that he is in this like this cage, you know, this... It's a, it's a cuddly toy cage, what's not to love? Um, I love the detail on him as well, much like the others, he has all that initial scarring and scar tissue. If you pull his tail, he's actually got like tendons and bone and muscle. It's just a really nice piece. The same goes for all of these, they are all beautiful pieces and I'm so glad that I didn't abandon and leave this one behind. I'm glad that I do own the entire set because yeah, I would really regret it if I didn't. So how can we talk about the depths of the ocean without of course bringing with us a shark? For many of you who haven't seen the old Italian zombie movies there is a very famous one where a shark is swimming through the ocean and there is a zombie down on the ocean bed that is actually like clawing at it and fighting with it. So uh, yeah I think this is connected to that but I might be wrong, who knows. Either way you have to have a shark. Sharks are amazing. So this is Snyder the shark. The zombie shark with an amazing like rib cage, if you can call it a rib cage on a shark. Um, but yeah, I absolutely love this thing. And inside his mouth, he has a little zombie fish attached to a string. So you kind of get two toys for one here. Um, but he can eat that fish. He can eat most of the other stuff if you so chose. But uh, yeah, Snyder the shark. Very cool. And so finally, that brings us over to the zombie octopus that you see over here. His name is Edgar, and as mentioned before, he is definitely one of my favourites. It is definitely a toss-up between Edgar the Octopus and the Giraffe. I do love Wilson the Giraffe equally as much. They are my two favourites throughout the entire first wave. Um, in wave number two, we did actually get a, um, a little glimmer, a little sneak peek that they might actually be doing a polar bear. I personally would love that. Polar bears are my all-time favourite animals. And yeah, a zombified polar bear would just be epic. I've been after a zombified polar bear way before we ever saw one in Game of Thrones. So yeah, make it happen, guys, please. Even if it's just for me, I would love one. <laughs> so uh, yeah, this is uh, this is Edgar. And once again, nice little gimmicks. He's got his little pirate hat. And inside, he's got a brain that pops out. And it's my understanding, you know, that octopuses do have multiple brains. And that's what we've got here. So uh, yeah, he's... Got his little eye patch as well as his regular zombie eye and the various cuts and bruises. But because he is an octopus and having multiple limbs, we got some that are just shorter, that they've been lopped off. We got some still with like stumpy blood on the end. We of course have a hook because what pirate wouldn't have a hook? And we've got a peg leg. Once again, I love this guy. So, so cool. And uh, yeah, I thought why not have him on display throughout the entire month of October. So there you have it. That is the Animazoms. Do you have a particular favourite that I have shown you today? I am so thankful that I was able to get the entire first wave because as I previously mentioned, I would deeply regret not owning this entire set. They are so unique and so special. And yes, okay, they're not one of a kind, but they are extremely limited and very hard to come by. If anything else does indeed happen with this series, these are going to be fantastic. You know, these are the very early ones. These are the first ones. I have since been in touch with Ashley Yeats um, discussing what might happen with this line because I, for one, 
really want that wave two. You know, I want to see that second wave. I was lucky enough to see the prototypes for wave two at one of the Comic Cons. And yeah, I want that polar bear. I, I really want that polar bear. So um, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please hit that like button, poke it right in its Animazom eye. And uh, yeah, why not check out this video up here or this one down here. And if you haven't already subscribed, tap that button right over there. It really goes a long way to helping the channel grow. So until next time, I'll see you in the afterlife. Take care.